Today we're going to be taking a look at this 100 amp hour LifePo 4 smart battery and this 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller that Power Queen sent me to review and share with you. Let's start off looking at the battery. In the package we get an owner's manual, we get a quick start guide, we get a sheet of Power Queen stickers, all contained in this plastic pouch, and we also get a set of terminals to put on top of the battery. It's worth saying that the manual and the quick start guide are both well written and contain tons of detail about how to properly use this battery. This video is not intended to take the place of the information contained in these documents, so I suggest if you've bought one of these, you read through these thoroughly before using it. Taking a closer look at the battery, the two terminals on top, which I've already installed, are metric 8 by one25 millimeter threads. This battery has a built-in Bluetooth monitor, and there's some information over here about how to get connected up to that, and we'll look at that later in the video. And then over here there's some information about the battery's capacities and specifications. As I'm sure you've already noticed, there are some collapsible carry handles here on top, that make lifting and moving the battery around easy. Now the exact dimensions of the battery are listed in the manual, but the overall width is about 10 and a quarter inches, the depth is about 6.6 .6 inches, and the height is about 8.3 inches. And it weighs in at about 22.3 pounds. Now if I spin this battery around, you can see there's more information on the back label about the battery and how to use it. As I mentioned earlier, the battery has an app that you can connect up to through Bluetooth using the Power Queen app on your smartphone. Now it looks like iPhones and Androids are both supported. I have an Android, so that's what we're gonna look at in the video. I don't know if there's any differences between the Android and iPhone app. Overall, the app has a nice user interface and is easy to use. However, to get into the app, you do need to create an account with Power Queen. I'm not really a fan of that, but once I went ahead and did that, everything seems to be working just fine. Now when I first logged into the app, I used this button to add my battery. I can either scan the QR code or just search for the Bluetooth connection here. And you can see my battery is listed right here. So if we look at the main screen, you can see the battery is currently at 99%, and that's because I charged it up overnight before shooting this video. The battery is currently reporting that it's at 59 degrees and in standby mode. Because nothing is connected up to the battery, you can see that the power and current are currently at zero, but the resting voltage is 13.5. If I click on the balance option and scroll up, you can see it tells us that all cells are well balanced. If I check on cells, you can see battery is in optimal working condition. And if I check BMS, it reports that the BMS is running smoothly. And then if I scroll down further, we get some more information about the battery, the device name, the serial number, the number of cycles, and of course it's zero because I've only charged it once, and the firmware version of the BMS. If I click on this middle button, we get some information about how to troubleshoot the battery and connect up devices to it. And then if I click on this last button, we can actually remove the battery from the app or even turn it on and off so it can't be used. I don't normally test batteries on this channel, so I don't have a load tester to go through a full discharge test on this battery. Having said that, I've seen a handful of videos where people have gone through a full discharge test and gotten better than the 100 amp rating on the battery. So I'll leave a link to a couple of those down below. And based on that information, I'm going to assume that my battery is going to perform similarly. However, I can test the low temp cutoff on this battery because it's winter time here in New England and we've got some cold nights in the forecast. As you can see, the battery is currently at 26 degrees, so it should be nice and cold. So I'm going to connect up the charger to this thing, and since it's below 32 degrees, the BMS should not allow it to charge. As you saw, it went into charging for just a brief second and then went back into standby mode. So it looks like the BMS is doing its job and keeping the charging cut off while the battery is cold. I've brought the battery inside and let it warm up a little bit. You can see it's now showing 57.2 degrees. If I bring in the charger and connect it up, let's see if the battery will now charge. And as you can see, it's now charging since the temperature is above 32. I've let this sit for 60 seconds or so and it is still charging. So that means that cold temperature cutoff has sensed that the temperature has risen above the 
threshold and the battery can now charge. So it is doing what it's supposed to. Now that we've spent some time taking a look at the battery, let's take a look at this solar charge controller. Now just like with the battery, this video is not intended to take the place of the well-written manual and quick start guide that come with the charge controller. Now one thing I want to mention about the quick start guide is that it's also a wall template so that you can locate any holes that you might need to drill to mount this on the wall. In addition to the documentation in the charge controller itself, we also get a temperature sensor that plugs into the bottom. We get some shrink tubing and some wire terminals for the wiring. We also get some wall anchors and screws and brackets to mount this thing to the wall. Just like with the battery, the overall dimensions are listed in the product manual. But the charge controller is approximately 9.7 inches wide, about 7.1 inches high, and about three and a quarter inches thick. And it weighs in at about four and a half pounds. Up on the top right is the main LCD screen and some indicator LEDs. There are control buttons right below the screen. And then down along the bottom, are connections for the solar panel, the battery, and the load. And I believe these accept up to eight gauge wire. There's a connection for RS-485 over here, and this looks like an RJ-45 network jack. Over here is the two pin connection for the included temperature sensor. And if I flip this over, you can get a look at sort of the mounting ears on the sides and the fins for the heat sink in the middle. In order to demonstrate how the charge controller works, I've made up some wire pigtails here. Tinned wires on one end will connect up to the charge controller, and I've got Anderson power poles on the other end to connect up to the battery, a load, and a power source. Now, these things are intended to be used with a solar panel, and eventually that's what I'm gonna use with it too. But as I already mentioned in the video, it's winter time here in New England. I don't have enough wire on hand to run a solar panel outside right now. So I'm gonna stay inside where it's warm and just use a power supply to simulate the solar panel. Now just for the sake of reference, this is what I've got set up to kind of test the system. Over here is my load. This is a Yezu FT891 ham radio transceiver. And in receive, it should be pulling about one amp and on transmit, it'll pull somewhere around 14 or 15 amps, depending on kind of the power level. Over here, of course, is the charge controller that's hooked up to the battery. And then back here in the corner is my 12 volt power supply that's connected up to the solar input of the charge controller. So looking at the control panel, you can see over here from the status LEDs, the solar panel LED is doing kind of a quick double blink every so often. And what that's letting us know is that the solar panel is connected and ready to be used if charging is required. However, this battery is still pretty much at 100%, so it's kind of just in standby mode right now. This LED is telling us that the battery is connected and working, and this LED is telling us that the load is connected and working. If this LED were lit up, that would let us know that we had an error or some kind of a problem. Up at the top, you can see that we have a battery icon and a 12 volt icon. Now, this charge controller can work on a 24 volt system, but because we've got a single 12 volt battery and 12 volt input, we're currently in 12 volt mode. This icon is letting us know the solar panel is connected, but again, I've got a power supply in place of the solar panel. And then over here, you can see that the battery is reading 13.2 volts, and it is currently supplying the load with power. Now, if I short press the arrow button on the right side of the control panel, that will turn the load off. You can see the LED is gone, and the icon is gone from the LCD screen. And you can't see it on the camera, but the radio is now turned off. To turn the load back on, I just push the button again. So we can page through some of the status and look at what's going on with the controller. I'm gonna use the down arrow to do that. And you can see the first item that we come to is the solar panel. And you can see right now it's showing that the voltage on the solar panel, which of course is our power supply, is at 13.8 volts. Next, you can see we're getting some information about the battery load. Right now it's showing that we've used 12 watt hours since this thing has been turned on. On the next page, you can see it's currently drawing 1.1 amps because the radio is over there turned on in receive mode. If I actually transmit with the radio, you can see it pulls quite a bit more current, right around 14 amps or so. And then if I unkey, you can see it'll go back down to 1.1 amps. I'm not entirely sure what this next page is showing us. We've got sort of a zero and a 15. If you happen to know what that is, let me know in the comments. This page is showing us E00, which at 
first you might think is an error, but error zero means there are no errors. If this was anything other than zero, that would mean we would have a problem. The next page shows us that the current temperature as measured by the temperature sensor is 24 degrees Celsius. On the next page we're seeing that currently there have been zero watt hours drawn from the solar panel, which makes sense since the battery is still at 100% and hasn't needed to draw any charge from our mock solar panel. And again on the next page you can see we're currently drawing zero amps from the solar panel. This page is showing us that the battery is currently still at 100% charge. And back again to the first page where we started, battery voltage is 13.2. Now if we want to change any of the configuration on the charge controller, I push and hold this button. And now you can see we can go in and change certain things. This page is letting us change the battery type, which is currently set to lithium, so I'm not going to change that. If I push this again, you can see we can change between 12 and 24 volt mode. Again, I'm going to leave that alone. On the next one, we can set our boost charge from the solar panel to a certain voltage. I'm going to leave mine at the default of 14.4. On this next page, you can see we can set the load voltage. Right now it's set to 12.4. Here we can set a low voltage cutoff. You can see by default it's at 10.8. I'm going to leave it there. And then we're back to setting the battery type. If I'm done with those settings, I can just push and hold the button and get back into normal display mode. The charge controller has its own separate app that you can download and install alongside the app for the battery. Now the first thing I'll mention about the app is that I was able to just download and open it and start using it. I didn't need to create an account to use it like I did with the app for the battery. Just like the battery app, this app has got a nice user interface, it's well laid out and all the information that we need to see is clearly presented. Right up here front and center we've got the state of the battery at 13.2 volts and this orange ring shows that it's 100% charged. The first section shows us the status of the solar panel, and the second shows us the status of the battery bank. And because we're not drawing anything from our mock solar panel right now, the current is zero and the power is zero. But you can see the voltage looks good at 13.8 and 13.2 respectively. If I scroll down further, we can see that the DC load is currently at 1.1 amp because the radio is on and receiving still. We've got a voltage of 13.2 and it's consuming 14 watts. Now one thing to mention is we can turn on and off the DC load with this switch here and we can also turn on and off DC load short circuit protection. And you can see I've actually got that disabled right now because it was causing some problems earlier when I was connecting up the radio it seems like it may be just a little bit too sensitive. Next we can see the temperature is currently displayed at 24 Celsius or 75.2 Fahrenheit. And then down here you can see a snapshot about the data that the controller has collected for today's usage. If I click over here we can look at historical data. Now of course we're not going to see a whole lot because this hasn't been connected up very long, but this would give us a, sort of a line chart with all the different lines, different colors, once data is able to be presented. Or you can click over here and switch that to a bar chart if you prefer. And then the last tab allows us to change the parameters of the charge controller. If we wanted to change the battery type, we could do that. And then you can see some of the advanced settings are down here. As I said before, this is just a temporary setup. Now, even before Power Queen contacted me and asked me to review this stuff, I'd been thinking about building my own battery box. And at first I thought this stuff would work for that, but it's obviously kind of too big and bulky for that, especially the charge controller. This is really intended to be mounted on a wall or something like that. I've already got a solar panel, but I need some more wire and fuses and things like that. But I think a good use case for this system would be to power my ham radio station over there on the other side of the room. Another thing that I could use this for would be to power the shed out in my backyard. I don't have any power out there now, but this system, especially with the low temp cutoff on the battery, would work well out there even in the winter time. So I guess we'll see what I end up doing with this. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more, I will of course have affiliate links in the video description. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.